How did you come up with naming the kids? <laughs> okay. Junior was named after Gil because he wanted a girl, and I had a boy, and I wanted him to be happy about having the boy. So I named him after his father, and we called him Junior. And he's been called that ever since. Bobby, we seen a birth announcement in a newspaper for a baby. And it was, you know, like an advertisement thing. And the birth announcement said Robert James whatever. And, you know, it, it just sounded good, that name and whatever. And we wanted to call him Bobby. So that's where that come from. We said, well, if we have a boy, we're going to call him Robert James. And we did. Dan, it just come to me. I don't know why, out of the blue. I always liked the name Danny, and I always liked the name Dan. I did not like the name Daniel. So I thought, well, I want to name him Dan, or Danny, but I am not going to name him Daniel. So I'll just call him what, or I'll name him what I'm gonna call him. So I did pick out the name Dan, because I didn't want Daniel. And I was trying to think of a middle name, and it just hit me, Alan. Dan Allen, and that's what I did. And that's how he got his name. And your name I picked out also because I did not know what to name. I went through so many names in my head trying to figure out what I wanted to name him. Jeffrey was one of them I had, and I thought, no, nah, I don't want that. And I always liked the name Billy. And I didn't really name you after Bill, but I liked the name Bill and, the, and Billy. And the Emmett come after your grandpa Moore. And that's where your name come from. And William was only because that's the name for Bill or Billy. I should have named you just like I did with Dan, you know, what I was gonna call you. But so it isn't that you were really named after Bill. He found out what your name was and assumed you were named after him. Because see the middle name was after Grandpa Moore. So he assumed the first name was after him because he was the only dad I knew or that I called dad. And I did. I called him dad the whole time he was alive because I never knew my dad. And he's the only man I ever called dad. I never called my stepfather's dad ever, never. But Bill, I was only two, two and a half when my mom married him. So I was real little and it took me till I was eight, nine years old before I found out he wasn't my dad. And I still called him Dad. I'd never called him anything but... And you had his last name for a little bit? Mm-hmm. I had his last name from the time I was in uh, kindergarten, at least. Of, I don't know what my mom called me for a last name between the age of two and a half to when I started school. But when I started school in kindergarten on, she made me go by Schnur. But then when I went to the girls' home, the first thing they did was give me back my birth name because he wasn't my father and they knew it. Okay, well, what about Kathy and Tori? What do you mean, where did their names come from? Kathy was after Grandma Moore. Her middle name was Catherine, Marjorie Catherine. And um, so you didn't Samantha. Her after uh, Kathy? Mm -hmm. or and she of? was born on the day of Kathy's birthday. That's why I called her Kathy. But Kathy's name was Kathleen. I really wish I would have done that, but, you know. Anyway, so, yeah, she was named after Grandma Moore, and the middle name, Samantha, of course, was after my brother, Sam. I had hoped to have a boy and call him Sam, but I had a girl, and I thought, Samantha will work, so I, Catherine, Samantha, and Jean was after me and my mom. My mom's middle name was Jean, but not spelled the same. I spelled it the way my middle name is. And, um, of course, more, you know. But and now her name is Cat Zoe. Yeah. But I told her to her face, I'll never call her anything but Kathy because she's Kathy. I yeah. mean, I call her Cat from time to time, you know, for sure. And Tori? Tori, I just thought it up out of the blue. I would, I don't know, I went around all the time and carried her. And if it was a girl, what in the hell would I call her? And your dad and I talked about it from time to time. We always liked the name Victoria, and it wasn't really because of um, Victoria. It was the Tory part that we liked so much. And I was watching Young and the Restless. You remember that? 
and Victor Newman's daughter's name was Tori, or Victoria, and they called her Tori. And I thought, that's it. That's what I'm going to name her. She's a girl. I'm naming her Tori. And your dad wanted to name her Victoria. And I was like, no, I'm going to, I think that's too long of a name, and it would be hard for, say, a little kindergarten gardener to pick up Victoria right away. And I'm going to call her Tori anyway. So I'm naming her Tori. Well, I was real close with Rosella. We were like sisters. And I just, I, I liked Digger and I wanted to name her after Rosella. And I think it's crazy as hell how much Tori resembled Rosella in so many ways. The way she stood, the way she walked. Just things about her, quirky things that reminded me of Rosella. And I regret it later because Rosella and I were so close and the way she turned on me, you know, in the end. I don't understand it and I never will, but family's family, you know, and I get that. But I never thought she would ever act the way she did. But I still cared about her. I did. We were close for a lot of years. So that's all I can say about okay. that. I want to know uh, the story about me skipping school. Skipping school. The day that you went to the field and the cops come along and picked you up. Yeah, and you well, they I were out abducted. looking. Yeah, they were out looking for you. And the park police. We called all of them. And, and the park police were looking for you over at Ingersoll Park and Memorial. Start over. And, what's the beginning? The school called me at home and told me, Bill, uh, how, why is Bill home today and never come to school? And I said, he did go to school, and I know it for a fact, because I brought him there and dropped him off. And she says, no, I'm sorry, but Bill never showed up today. And Billy. Billy. Well, I call you Bill now, because you're right. <laughs> but I call you Billy from time to time, too. But anyway, yeah, Billy didn't show up. And so... I, I got hold of your dad at work. I think he worked at Dubuque at the time. I know he did. And I called him up there and I said, Billy's missing. They can't, he never showed up to school. And I took him to school and dropped him off. I see him go in the building. Okay, I'll be right home. And he come home. And we both got in the car and we went up and down every road. We went to the school right away. You know, it's like, what's up? Why do you say he wasn't here? I dropped him off. How in the hell did he get out of here? We don't know, but he was gone. But then they're the ones that said something. After we were talking, the teacher said something about Dwayne White had disappeared or didn't come home or didn't come to school either. And I don't know, we started trying to put it together. And Well, is he with him or is he not with him? I says, I don't even know if he knows him. I, and I told her, you know, that you what grade you were in and stuff, you know. And then the teacher's like, oh, my God, I'm so scared. I, I hope and pray to God that it ain't going to be like what happened, you know, back a year or two or whatever. And I said, what do you mean by that? And she didn't want to tell me, but it come up that something about some kid was found out there in one of the storage sheds, and it wasn't pleasant. And that really set panic into all of us. And your teacher was like in tears. I'm not even joking. And we were all looking everywhere. It was like our worst nightmare. And I remember your dad and I at the end of the road by Memorial um, and by, by where the, you go into the field. And the cops come around. They were going to come over to the house and talk to us, I guess. But they come around and for some reason they must have so, known that you were in the field or something. We didn't know it at that point. And they pulled over and were in their squad car and a cop come and talk to us and yeah, they're here in the field. We're gonna take them in. We're gonna scare them straight, you know? <laughs> they want to put the spear of God into you. So they was like, just go along with it. I said, okay. And your dad said, yeah, that might be a good idea so you don't do it again. And then they got you guys and put you in the this is a squad car, you know, we're going to go downtown, we're going to talk with you, and first you got to go talk to your teachers, and you guys were so scared, you were crying, you really thought you were going to jail. I don't remember if they put cuffs on you, but I remember they made it look like you were really being arrested. 
you were so scared. And then when you went and seen your teacher, she was trying to scold you. And yet she had tears in her eyes because she was like me, terrified. We didn't know what the hell happened. But anyway, by the time you left, you were forgiven and just told never to do it again. Oh, I won't, I won't, I promise I'll never skip school again. <laughs> but yeah, it scared the crap out of you. I went home and dad made me sit in the room all night long mm -hmm. and scared me. He put me in a room and had the lights off and left me in the room and told me he was going to come in and just to sit there and wait for him and I he never came in he just told me to come in and go to bed or he came in and just told me to go to bed mm, I don't and remember I, that and part. I never got in trouble for nothing he never said another word about it really you know I didn't remember that part. but I was really scared that dad was going to spank me or something and nothing mm. never happened right I was just just scared when well, we both were scared to death I mean I know yeah. So that's I was just probably a young why boy and didn't know what I was doing. I just thought, I know. Oh, he knew you were really I wanted good. to skip school. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't know that that was a bad thing. But, yeah. Uh, back then, I really did I was in first grade, I think. Mm -hmm. Your dad acted like a dad back in that day. And we were happy in a lot of ways. So, I want to jump to the 80s. 80s. Yep. Yeah. So, you and dad, you moved to, from Nina Terrace to 18th Street. Why did you move from Nine of Terrace to 18th Street? Because we were having real hard money problems. And, did uh, Dad lose his job or what happened? Mm -mm. No. Nope. Because I remember he was working at Dubuque and then he ended up working Actually, at Bear. Actually, he was doing good with money. I mean, making money. I wasn't seeing it, I, but I never did. Your dad paid stuff and he never gave me money unless I asked for something for from the store or whatever. But he, um, all of a sudden he was having difficulty keeping up with the bills and we got behind on our mortgage and it was like gonna be a foreclosure. And so me, I was always the type that worried about the bills and you know, I had kids to worry about. So I told him, you know, I did some thinking while he was at work and I thought, well, I'm going to apply at housing because if we lose our house, I wanted another house to go to big enough for all my kids. I was tired of living the way we lived. and It seemed like every few years we ended up on welfare, never had a washer and dryer. You know, it was just hard raising six kids the way we did. So I called one day while he was at work. I called housing and talked to them and asked him, I said, is there any way that we, if we um, give up our home, if we could get housing and, you know, go buy our income and stuff. And he asked me questions, you know, like if we were both working or one and I answered everything and I basically applied over the phone. And he's like, yeah, if you want to file bankruptcy, you will be able to get into housing and you know, we'll only charge you one fifteen a month for rent, which is dirt cheap back then. Which was 2915 18th Street. Yep. So we were able to give up that home where our house payment was almost 400 a month. And back and then, Nina Terrace was, was yep. 4414 Nina mm -hmm. Terrace. Yep. And so, and we were, uh, that way we could apply for food stamps. Our rent would only be one fifteen a month. We had a four bedroom we were moving into compared to having a three bedroom on nine and terrace. And we had two bathrooms compared to one. You know, it just seemed like there was a lot more to go it, for. Yeah, the basement. Right. So I did all that and your dad said, yeah, sounds like a plan. And we went to housing and signed up and Uncle Ed come from Winnebago and helped us move. And we moved over there and gave up the home. Hmm. I thought it was like the be a whole new beginning, you know. I thought we were maybe make it, but. So where did some where some of the places you guys, you and Dad went, on dates in the eighties when you first moved over there? Always Frontier Lounge or the Crystal Palace. Always. Still, even then. Uh huh. And always with Bonnie and Jim. I seem to remember like Ace of Diamonds or something. Yeah, like you're right. I did forget about that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't Ace of Diamonds. Brandy Nair or something? No, Ace of Diamonds. There? And then there was, uh, no, um, what the hell was that called? Uh, 
Well, yeah, it was Ace of Diamonds that was out there, the restaurant, but there was a bar in there too, a country bar. Uh -huh. So yeah, it was Ace of Diamonds, Crystal Palace, that was downtown, and uh, the, um, what the hell was it? One down on Auburn Street, Frontier, I mean, not Frontier, yeah, Frontier Lounge. Okay. And we went to Boylan to watch wrestling all the time. I mean, every time. There was a about it. Boylan, we went. During Who were some of the people you went and watched to wrestling? Nick Bockwinkle, um, Bobby Heenan, um, The Crusher, uh, Greg, the one I was talking about the other night, and Jim Gagne. 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 Yeah, Greg Gagne. Gagne and, uh, Jim, Jim Brunzel, they were called the Who was Flyers. Dad's favorite wrestler? Your dad's? Yeah. Did he have a favorite? Mm -hmm. We both liked the High Flyers, and we liked we liked a lot of them. I mean, and it seemed real back then. And we eventually figured out. Yeah, lots of blood and yep. cigar smoking and mm -hmm. yeah, all that stuff. Crusher before WWF. Um, and it was at Boylan. Oh, one of them was Billy Robinson. We liked him a lot. Yeah. And, uh, God, it's been a while. It's hard to remember all of them. No, that's okay. Um, uh, oh, that one you liked, some, The Warrior. I liked Hulk Hogan. And, yep, and Hulk Hogan, The Warrior. Oh, I tell you, it would get so loud when it was like either Warrior or Hulk Hogan against Bachwinkle and. I hated Nick Bockwinkle with a passion. So did everybody yeah. at that time. And, but it, after a while of going so much, we kind of got the idea that it was a setup because Bockwinkle, you just knew one way or another he's gonna pull something dirty and he was gonna come out ahead no matter what. And it always happened that way. Crusher, we've seen in some bloody ass ma matches. Um, and there was, uh, trying to think, um, oh man, it was, I want to say, it was that German guy or Russian? Very Ivan, 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 yep, him. Um, God, I'm trying to remember, there was a That's lot. That's okay, yeah. Um, Jake the Snake. Oh, well, that's all 80s stuff, but yeah. Well, that's what that you're was asking the WWF. About, yeah. yeah. Well, I was talking about when you and Dad used to go watch us. Well, I'm just telling you what but we yeah. did, and it was yeah, dancing. Mm -hmm. Your dad never danced. I mean, I had to dance with girls or with maybe Jim or something, but we never touched. You right, know. Yeah. But your dad would never dance. Dad never danced, huh? No, never. Not Wouldn't even, even try. I, even I, I, once in a blue moon, he might try to, but yeah, yeah, I was forbidden to never dance with anybody. And even when I danced with Jim, he was jealous. But anyway, I don't want to go into it. But you used to dance at home. Mm-hmm. That was okay. Do you know, me and your dad got into a real bad fight one time. This is off the record. No, it's not, because it's on here. Okay. My brother, Ed, lived with us. He was 13 or 14. I'm just saying. My brother, okay? We used to dance a lot, and me and Leonard used to dance a lot. He didn't even like me doing that. I believe it. But that's all I'm going to say on it. But, yeah. So I, I wouldn't, you know, I was just not allowed. And that was kind of a lot of the problems. But so you guys get divorced at the end uh, or in... We separated in April of 1984. And tell the story of how you uh, started talking to Brian again. All right, that happened in June. April, we split up. Uh huh. And he went to live with Bonnie and Jim. Yep. And I started getting. I was and just, Dan, Dan left with him, right? Not them. No, not yet. Not yet. No, okay. that didn't happen. When did we, Dan move in with with? When with me and Dan. your dad went to divorce court, and we didn't do that until after we settled things with uh, uh, over the what happened. Okay. With that court hearing. Okay. So until that happened, it was basically me and you kids there on Niner Terrace, and I. So how long was that that we were on Niner Terrace? Couple months. Couple. Of not Niner Terrace, 18th Street. 18th Street, yeah, not Niner Terrace. And that was just a couple months. Mm-hmm. Not long because, like I said, 
we started to split up. And so in between April and then you guys got married when? We didn't get married in June, but that's when we started. No, talking. when did you get married? November. November. So in between April and November, mm -hmm. you tell the Brian story. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, April is when things went down. Um, Brian's your old boyfriend. Yeah, he was my old boyfriend from back in the day when yep. I lived at the girls' home. But anyway, um, Brian used to find my phone number in the phone book very easily, or by calling the operator. But nonetheless, what happened was, I kept getting these phone calls, and the kids knew it too, because they were taking them. And they were obscene phone calls from guys, and I think it was your dad's friends that were truck drivers would call at night and I think it was a scare tactic to get me scared enough to where I'd let your dad come back and stay at the house. So, but nonetheless, I, it didn't work. And I, I was trying to figure out a way to get him to quit calling. So I told the kids, I says, next time somebody calls and it's a guy, I'm taking this whistle. And I did, I had a regular whistle. And I'm blowing that damn thing as loud as I can into the phone and they'll think twice what I call again. Well, wouldn't you know, it happened to be a time when Brian called, and I picked up that phone, and I, I blew that whistle as loud as I could, and I'd like to have blown his eardrums out. But anyway, needless to say, he hung up. Well, then a couple hours later, he called back, and he's like, he knew it was me when I answered, and he's like, what the hell is going on? He said, uh, why did someone blow a, a whistle into the phone like that? I said, who is this? And you know, then I knew who it was. It didn't take me long to figure out. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I sure didn't know it was you or that you'd be calling. And he's like, well, what's going on? And I told him, I said, well, I'm separated from Gil. And I think that his uh, friends are calling here and blowing noises, not, you know, not blowing noises, but making nasty sounds on the phone and just trying to scare me. And so I decided to start blowing a whistle into the phone so they wouldn't call anymore. He started laughing. So anyway, um, I and I had told him we were separated, and he said, well, do you think you're going to get back together? And I said, no, I really don't, because it was bad enough that I, I'm getting a divorce. There ain't no way I'm not. And he's like, well, I, what happened? And I told him. And he's like, holy shit, you got to be kidding me. And anyway, he said, well, it, not then though, not right away. He said, well, can I see you? And I said, well, I'm not really dating right now. I said, and the only way that you'd be able to go out with me is if you meet my kids and you're, you get to know them. Because I'm not going to be with anybody unless, you know, works out with my kids. And he's like, oh, okay, well, that's not a problem. I don't care. Brian would have done any damn thing he could to try to get me back. So, anyway, he knew the situation. I was separated with my kids, and whatever happened was going to be with the kids. So, I invited him over to have dinner. And I, I made sure windows were all open, everything was uh, above board, and when he come over, and it was. And that's 